Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Happy belated Easter, everybody. So, somebody stood on the wall during the most holy time for Christians. Somebody still had to stand on that wall. Somebody had to guard against the evil that lurks all around you. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Kevin Jackson's who you're listening to. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. Liz, I want to thank her for filling in for me on Friday. And, uh, you know, I got a hectic travel schedule, as you guys know. So we've got a few people that will guest host from time to time. And I appreciate Liz. Liz is a talent. She does a lot of other things as well. So hopefully you're able to make contact with her and uh, get to know her better. Anyway, uh, busy time for us. It was a long weekend. A lot of people got Friday off. It was Good Friday. And, um, you, you know, Easter obviously was on Sunday. As I said, the holiest of Christian holidays. He is risen. And I, I know a lot of people on the left hate that. They hate that. They love that holiday, though. <laughs> oh, they love getting that free day. But they hate that uh, we celebrate something so magnificent, something that, that gives that empowers many of us because you know that you're just a cog in the wheel of life. You understand your role. It doesn't minimalize you in any way to say I'm insignificant in the scheme of things. I'm significant in the whole. But then there's a part of you that has to understand that the world is going to move along without you. That's what keeps you humble. Versus, say, Hollywood, who believes that without them, how is the world going to go along without me, without my ideas, without the way I believe things should work? They completely disregard the natural order, which is no matter how big you get on this earth, you're still nothing. There's something to be said in in understanding that level of humility. I could be the president of the United States, the best rock could be Bruno Mars, be president of the United States, a Victoria's Secret uh, top model on the cover of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Uh, in name 5,000 other things, and I would still be insignificant. That's that's a tough thing to understand about yourself. People know you. Yeah, people, people recognize me. I go around places, hey, you're that guy from Fox. Yeah, they know me well. <laughs> <laughs> or occasionally they go, you're that dude that does the radio hits on so-and-so show or whatever. I'm, ah, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Look at me, Mr. Significant, right? I'm insignificant. So are you. That's okay. There's something to be to be proud of in saying, you know what? I don't feel like I'm that big of a deal. People meet me and they're like, you know, I give them my number. I can have your number. Sure. Don't abuse it. <laughs> you know, or, you know, Kevin, you respond back to my emails. Of course I do. What do you think? <laughs> Who do you think you're dealing with? And it's flattering, I'll admit. But at the end of the day, I tell these guys, look, come on, folks. Not that big of a deal. Occasionally you see my face on TV. What, what does that mean? I share the same opinions as you for the most part. I just figured out a way and, and it wasn't through some conniving thing like, oh, kick everybody else off of TV. There will be no other black people on Fox. <laughs> you know, I didn't wake up in the morning and go, oh, Star Parker, you're gone. Alan West, <laughs> your time is up. <laughs> I just did what I do. And it isn't that, I hate to say this, but it's not that mystical and magical. I'm arguing with some knucklehead on Fox over the holidays. And it was on April 1st, April Fool's Day. You would think this story was about April Fool's because they want to give you $500 in California. Some place wants to give you 500 bucks for existing, just for being. And I'm arguing with some leftist named David something. And I, my first comment was, it, it, you, America, it's not April Fool's Day. It's just what leftists do. They want to give away your money. It's a, the, it's a clever scheme to extort money from the contributors to society and give it to the people that aren't contributing. Oh, we're going to give this to families that are struggling. Really? So what? There's not enough welfare in California for the families who are struggling? These people, they get subsidized, if not outright free housing. They get a food budget. They get child care they get all kinds of breaks how much in fact if you keep giving incentives for poverty i'm probably going to take you up on it and say you know what why the heck would i go out and, and, and try to struggle for a living when there's so many policies programs out there that'll just let me get free money 
And I love this idea of free money. Is it free? Somebody making 15 bucks an hour, ask them how free it is. That's 30 plus hours of work. If you want to do the real math, it's 33.33 hours of work. That's how much free it is. You think somebody wouldn't want to get that time back? Oh, Kevin, they won't be paying. It'll just be the super rich who are paying it. Okay. So today it's 500. What's it going to be tomorrow? You know what people are going to, if you give somebody 500 free dollars, let me tell you what they're going to tell you tomorrow as a leftist. I'll, I'll give guarantee you this. Why can't it be more? What you expect me to do with $500? I can't do nothing with no $500. Why God, you need to be a lot more than that. Oh, really? Well, what's it need to be? And we're going to go just like minimum wage where, oh man, Bert can't make no living on $7.65 an hour. We need to raise minimum wage to 15. So, hey, let's double your free gift, your stipend, your, oh, should we call it an allowance? Because it's government minimizing you. And I said to the guy on TV, I would be insulted if you said I'm going to give you 500 free dollars. Because number one, I know somebody had to earn it. You're telling me, Kevin, you don't have to earn this. You can have it. Here, little black boy, have $500, gift of some white bourgeois leftist who says, you need it. No, I think I'd rather earn it. And he cut, brings it up. Well, Milton Friedman is the one who brought this up years ago. It was a conservative idea and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, whatever. Don't try to tell me. Milton Friedman. Oh, really? So that so it was a conservative that brought it up. So that makes it a good idea. I don't care if... if uh, Attila the Hun brought it up. I don't care if Donald Trump brought it up. Giving somebody something for nothing is never a good idea. It's not a good idea. And it doesn't exist because somebody's paid for it. That's a fact. You feel better about things when you earn it. Then, you know, as he comes back with, well, you know, there are programs where they do have to work. Okay, well, then it's a work program. It's not a free program. Because there's no way you're going to rationalize giving somebody $500 and say it's free and it's all good for the economy and all these other things. That's what we keep doing. And that's why we keep giving more poverty. We are creating more people in poverty by by doing things that actually get people to want to be part of the poverty system. It's it's pimping. Who qualifies for it? How do you you cut it off? And oh, by the way, here's a, a memo. Poverty sucks, and it's supposed to, because you're supposed to want to get out of it. That's why poverty sucks. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about today, folks. Glad you're here. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. Kevin J. 
Jackson Radio Show. Tea Party community has a, a thing we call it our wall of heroes. <clears throat> Pardon me. And it, it, it essentially showcases all these unsung heroes that are out there fighting for the American way to make America great again. And I'll give you an example. A teacher who got suspended because she said to the kids after they had done this walkout for the, quote, Second Amendment uh, in, in, in essentially an anti-gun walkout. And she says, well, let's just look at it this way. So guns are supposedly killing people, right? So would it be OK for a pro-life group to want to have a walkout based on abortion? And she posed it as a let's look at all the angles of this issue. And I thought it was a great way for people to go, wow, you know, uh, make these kids think they could, you know, look at it and, and have a, a debate over it and a discussion around it. And instead, they suspend this woman over this. She should be on our wall of uh, heroes. But more le- moreover, the people who suspended her should be ridiculed into submission we should be going after that administration so not only should we have this wall of heroes in contrast we should have this wall of shame and i've I've said to everybody we are reconstituting the tea party movement by way of the tea party community to say we're going to go after people that do this to her do these types of things to people like her i should say it happens all the time colleges and universities professors that do and say things Um, While I was doing an interview on Fox the other day uh, during the holiday weekend, um, there there was a a teacher who spent 15 minutes ranting about how America has been bad for minorities. And a little girl had the the gall to tape it and give it to her mom. That little girl deserves to be on our wall of heroes. She tapes this woman. A black woman going at demoralizing all these white kids. You have to watch it to to see to believe that there is a teacher in the sixth grade telling these white kids you are oppressors, et cetera, et cetera, is so uncalled for. And the school says, well, we don't condone that type of thing and we do not want our teachers to do this. Whatever. Look, get rid of her. She should be fired. If we do enough of this, we push back. We can stem the tide. And I'm not I'm telling you, folks. Get off your butts. Stop just waiting on other people to do it. Get involved. And that's why I keep telling you, come back and get on the Tea Party Community dot org. Get signed up. Join one of our operations. If you're not going to join it, start it. I, I promise you, you write to me. I will help you. If it's something that fits in our charter, I'll help you. We'll get two or three more volunteers everywhere. These things occur. We should be in on it. We should be involved in it. So what we're doing at Tea Party Community is we're giving out an award. It is the wall of heroes. You do when something like this occurs, we're going to make sure you're recognized. And at the end of the month, we'll let people choose the person who's done the most, you know, like, you know, like do a bracket and we'll give out an award, you know, probably be a gift certificate or something like that. And if it's big enough, we'll bring them to our convention or to some big convention or to our movie opening or something like that. I want to do things that involve you folks. And yeah, I need your help. You know, look, you listen to this program. Many of you faithful listeners take down the number 844-551-8255. Is it that big of a deal to call and say, hey, Kev, love what you say, love your work, want to help? KJRadio.com. Go to the website. Send a note. Kevin, love your work, want to help getting four, five people to join teapartycommunity.org, whatever it is. Understand what we're trying to do here. This is not about me. It, let me tell you something. If it was about me, I would have left it a long time ago because I'm not getting enough response back to be like, ooh, look at me, I'm all Mr. That. I would have abandoned this. I do this because I care about this country. I care that you're getting what I hope is a good enough analysis of what's going on that you want to continue to come back. But look, you can only do so much before you go. Oh, nobody seems to care. That's the problem with conservatives is we're so lackadaisical. We just figure somebody's doing it. We well, you know somebody is doing it and they're struggling to do it. They get up every day. They bust their butts and everybody else just looks. I was one of them. Look, I'm not getting after you. I was one of those people. 
Oh, shoot, somebody got it? Well, why you need Kevin to do it? I'm going to go vacation. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go indulge my hobbies. I'm going to go do something that I want to do. And finally, I got in the game. And you know what? I don't have any regrets getting in the game and going after these clowns every day and getting on TV and representing you. If you're out there, there are people that tell me, Kevin, when you come on TV, man, I got I, I, I made I made my family watch it. If you're one of those people that's doing that, let me tell you something. I'm not doing that because I'm. Yeah. Woo, I, there's a bunch of people watching. I do it and I speak in regular talk because I want people to understand it. And that's why we do these things. So there's a group of kids, dozens of Rockledge High School students who walked out on Friday, Good Friday, to protest what they said were their gun rights. They held a walkout in support of the Second Amendment. And they said, we shouldn't lose our rights because somebody commits a crime. Now, see, that's sanity. Rockledge High School. 70 students gathered on the Rockledge High School practice field in support of of the second amendment and let me tell you something else many other students would have done the same thing all at, at uh, high schools all over the country you think cnn wants to cover this you think cnn wants to let you know that there are students out there that get it they spoke about their the you know their right to bear arms and here's what they said we're not backing down we're not taking no for an answer this is what anna delaney a junior gun rights advocate who co-organized a rally it lasted about 25 minutes. Do you think they're going to make Anna Delaney, the David Hogg on CNN, the anti-David Hogg, willing to argue against that clown? Do you think they're going to do that? Do you think they're going to see him in two sides of the window? Or do you think they're only going to let David Hogg talk about what he wants to talk about? Make him the hero. Allison Camerata actually <laughs> said this. It's amazing to me that she actually said this. Do we have the clip? You want to play the clip again? This is an American issue, and as such, we have to work together. David, I am stunned that four colleges rejected you. What kind of dumb <laughs> colleges don't want you? I mean, you've taken the country by storm. So that's how CNN treats you when you follow the narrative. But these kids that understand their rights and understand where they, you know, their rights as Americans and, and what they want their future to be. I don't think they're going to get any coverage. They say we're protecting our Second Amendment right. It should not be infringed upon. That's constitutional. But I don't As I said to many people, you got to read something about some old white guys from 200 years ago gave me my rights. No, no, I got when I was born and, and my ability to survive became it's an eight. It, that's what gave me my rights to survive. And I'm going to do I'm going to use the biggest, baddest weapon there. If you pick up a rock, I'm going to pick up a brick. You pick up a twig, I'm going to pick up a tree, a stump. (laughs) That's just the way it works. School administrators, they say, monitored the walkout, but there were no issues. And there wouldn't be any issues. And as I said before, you can solve the school shooting problem instantaneously. Put armed guards in these schools, armed people. Nobody's going to be shooting up these schools. But the left know if they do that, they lose their ability to profit from this. is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. I'm the son, mother, Cameron Sterling. I will not allow Cameron to be here today for his reasons. And like his aunt said, we all out of tears. We have nothing else in us to cry about now because guess what? We all knew what it was just like y'all knew what it was going to be. But one thing about God that we serve, and if you believe that God that I believe in, he do not sleep, nor do he slumber. So we may not get justice here on this earth, but let me tell you something. You see, when God comes, he's going to come. And we all going to know, because you know why? It may be just this day that Howard Lake say, You know what? It's time for me to be honest. It's time for me to really tell what really happened. You see, because Alta can't tell his story to you nor to me. He's gone. There's no more coming back. So there's not no amount of money on this earth, on this in this world, that can give those kids back to their father. They took a human away. They took a father away. 
They took somebody away that did not deserve to be away. The way they killed him was in cold blood. You know it, I know it. But yes, the system has failed us. Yes, we are disappointed. But as a family, we're going to stay strong. And we're going to keep each other prayed up. The devil thought he won, but he didn't. That was Alton Sterling's baby mama. One of his baby mama. You hear her say at the introduction, I'm Alton Sterling's oldest son's mother. Now look, I'm not trying to make any people we have different people with different families and all that that's become very normal these days however let's just be real we have a proliferation of baby mamas and men i wouldn't say men little boys that we think are men who've grown up to believe that they should have multiple kids by multiple baby mamas and not necessarily take care of them and what ms baby mama sterling is trying to do here is she is trying to hit the lotto See, she's seen a lot of things happen where uh, people like uh, Philando Castile and uh, what's his name? Uh, Freddie Gray and Michael Brown Jr. They, you know, these people have gotten big paydays after the death of their lottery. I mean, their uh, boyfriends or baby daddies and whatever else. People are getting paid on black angst, on black death. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here is who you're listening to. It's the Kevin Jackson show. They're frustrated. She's frustrated. Why can't I get my payday? Now, she says, this ain't about the money. I don't care about the money. Do you really believe that she doesn't care about the money? But let's back up a bit. So we've had the decision about Alton Sterling, where they said he he got himself killed. And I'm going to explain that story a little bit better. And we've had another story. Stefan Clark, I believe is a kid's name, who was killed in Sacramento and the black people down there just shutting down basketball games and so on and so forth. But have you noticed anybody burning down cities and getting all in an uproar as they did in the Michael Brown era, the Barack Obama era? No, you didn't. You haven't noticed that, have you? See, that's a sign, folks. I talk often about these signs. I want you to understand what the difference is. What a difference a president makes. See, what Donald Trump said is, this is a local matter. I'm not letting this rise to the level of the nation and, oh, cops are killing black people, et cetera, et cetera. Particularly when you know the story. Yeah, I said story. I didn't say story. See, because there's a story behind the Michael, I'm sorry, behind the uh, Alton Sterling incident. Alton Sterling, born June 14th, 1979, death July the 5th of 2016. He died the day after Independence Day. He was known locally in Baton Rouge. By the way, that's the same uh, town where Stormy Daniels got her start. He was known in Baton Rouge as the CD man. You want to know what the CD man is? He's the dude that bootlegs CDs and would sell them to you. Or he'd make his own. Mixtapes is what they call them, and he'd sell them. And he was a criminal. Now, Alton Sterling wasn't just your ordinary criminal, he was a criminal, and his record included violent offenses. The 2009 affidavit of probable cause said that he resisted arrest and a black semi automatic gun fell from his waistband as arresting officers wrestled him on the ground. Now, the officers who were called to arrest him had no idea about his criminal record. They didn't even know who he was. When they got the call, somebody was said to be menacing people in front of a store, you know, one of these little convenience stores where Alton Sterling would sell his CDs. Now, the owner of the store where the shooting occurred said, Sterling carried a gun. By the way, in the hood in Baton Rouge, you can be doggone skippy that that Sterling always carried a gun, but the owner said he noticed the gun about a week before the event that uh, took Sterling's life. And he says, other people who had been vending up there, selling illegally, but I don't care. You know, that's that's the way that that's called the hustle in the black community. But other people had been robbed at this location doing the same thing because there's always somebody else on a stronger hustle. 
So while I credit Alden Sterling for saying, you know what, man, I'll make these mixtapes. I'm going to get ahead and I'm going to hustle selling these CDs. Good for him. Congratulations. But you know what else he was worried about? He wasn't worried about cops coming and killing him and taking his money. He was worried about brothers who were on a bigger hustle, a stronger hustle coming to take his money while he worked. So see, you see how the food chain works in the, in the black community? That was the deal. So Sterling's up there. He's hustling. He's got his gat. That's, that's a gun for you white folks. And the, the owner of the store says he wasn't causing trouble where the situation occurred where he lost his life. Now, here's the deal. Somebody called. Somebody called and they said it was an anonymous caller that reported a man was threatening him and waving a handgun while in the process of selling CDs. Now, I don't know whether this was a, uh, you know, a competitor <laughs> who was trying to get Alton Sterling off of his corner, off of his spot. Was it somebody who saw that Sterling was armed and said, OK, well, since he ain't going to give up the money, I'm going to get him, let him catch a case because Sterling's already a criminal. He probably shouldn't have that weapon. Um, I don't know what the laws of gun ownership is in the state of Baton Rouge. I know my uncle (laughs) went to prison because he carried a gun from Texas over the state line of Baton Rouge. He was in prison for about five years uh, in one of those Louisiana prisons. So long story short, somebody, not a cop, not a white person, not uh, Donald Trump, (laughs) called the cops on Alton Sterling while he's vending his CDs with his weapon, a semi-automatic weapon. Most of them are, by the way. And the cops show up to do their job. Now, I want you to understand. I want want to put you in the mindset of a police officer right now, particularly since I've made a movie called Bleeding Blue, and I hope you go to Bleeding Blue Movie and check it out. They've been called, big black dude, menacing people, waving a gun, and they go to the scene. I want to know what you would do if your phone rang and they said, hey, listen, uh, Kevin, there's a big black dude out here and he's waving a gun at people as they walk by. Can you come do something about it? Uh, no, I'm eating. I'm sorry. Bye. Click. I'm not going. But these police officers have to go. So do you think that they're at a, sti- a, at a, a in a state of, of, of higher you know, tension than if it was, hey, there's a cat in the tree Can you come help us get it out? You follow? So they show up. They say, hey, uh, we, you know, I mean, you see the cops. Alton Sterling sees the cops. They come up. They, they, this is 1235 a.m., folks, at the Triple S Food Mart. He was detained by these police officers. And they, they try to get, they tell him, hey, look, we, we want to, got to question you or whatever. He starts resisting. They tase him at first. They force him to the hood of the, the of their car. And then eventually he hits the ground. And he's pinned to the ground by these police officers. One's kneeling on his chest. The other's on his thigh. And they're trying to get control of his arms. Sterling will not cooperate. And I want to set the scene. All around him at this point, you got people starting a video. So you got two cops. I don't know what their races are, but uh, I know one of them was an Italian guy. But they're they're wrestling with this big black dude. They got him on the ground. They got black folks all around them, videoing with cameras, yelling out and stuff. These cops are saying to, to Alden Sterling, you know, stop resisting or whatever. And then you can hear one of them in the video. I don't know if you've seen it, but he says, if you effing move, I swear to God, is the officer. His name is Salamone. And then... The Lake, the other officer, he says, Lake, he's going for his gun because they can't control his arms. They say he's going for his gun. And sure enough, boom, 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 he shoots him. Now, that's the scenario. You tell me what you do. People around you, do you, uh, uh, with all the the focus on police officers, do you think somebody's going to try to do something to this guy with everything that's going on and say, well, we're just going to go kill us a black dude. See, this is why we, we've gotten to a point of ridiculousness in this country. And when I want I want to come back, I want to talk about this other case. Short break. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. 
My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. end to identity politics this is the kevin jackson radio show all right everybody there's a new name out there his name is stefan clark get used to it but it's not he he'd like to be remembered with the likes of michael brown jr and alton sterling and philando castile and many others young blacks killed by police hunt it down etc etc right and i'm just telling you right now what a difference a time makes what a difference the leadership makes in this country i want you to flash back nine years or so under barack obama the era of obama and what the police officers had to deal with i want you to flash back to that i want you to flash back to that moment where gates tried to get into his own home and he's confronted by a police officer who happened to be white a man doing his job because a neighborhood watch said, hey, we just saw somebody go through the window of Professor Gates' home. That's that's what neighbors are supposed to do. And then police shows up, white guy, says, hey, listen, um, somebody saw somebody entering this home through the window. I need to make sure everybody's okay. I want you to think about everything that could have the possibilities. Maybe somebody broke in and was, was you know, accosting Professor Gates. Or maybe it was somebody breaking into the house or it could be as innocent as Professor Gates getting into his own home because he left his keys. It could be any of those scenarios. But in any of those scenarios, the police has a responsibility to find out what's going on. He gets confronted by smart aleck intelligentsia, Professor Gates, friend of Barack Obama, who says, I don't need to show you anything, white boy. This is my house. And the cop says, look, I don't I'm, it's not about white black. It's not about all the different things you've got. I'm not trying to oppress you, black man. He says, I need to see your ID to make sure you who you say you are. Make sure everything's cool. You're not under duress. There's not somebody standing behind a door making you say this, et cetera, et cetera. Can you understand the scenario that I'm putting before you on the Kevin Jackson show? Glad you guys are here, by the way. Eight, four, four, five, five, one, eighty two, fifty five. If you want to call me KJ radio dot com, if you want to contact us otherwise. So everybody's done their part up to this particular part of the scenario except professor gates who then says do you know i know the president of the united states i'm a bad man man, man, jamma baby don't you do and he goes all gorilla gangster jungle on this dude and the white dude's like look man and put i'm gonna put these bracelets on you and we're gonna take you down to the station and blah 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 and the rest is history barack obama says the cop you know acted stupidly by doing his job See, that's how the left views things. They see when people do their jobs, that's doing that's being stupid. How could you possibly go there and do your job, cop? I talked earlier about Alton Sterling. People want to make a big deal. He was killed. Another black man was killed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Eric Garner. Remember him in New York? The dude selling whatever they call him when you sell cigarettes singularly out of the package. Singies or I don't know what they call them, but they got a name for him. He he doesn't want to go to go to jail because he's he's elite. He's violating New York laws. These aren't laws set up by Donald Trump. These aren't laws set up by conservatives. The people who run New York are a bunch of left left wing leftist lunatic liberals. I know I said leftist twice, but that's OK. Deal with it. And instead of surrendering and saying, here you go, he decides he's going to fight. By the way, black female cop right there and has a heart attack. And they, the cop didn't care. They killed him. He just dropped me. He had his hands up and said, don't, don't, you know, don't choke me. Don't do this. His big fat butt died because he's out of shape 
and the pressure that was put on his 300 plus pound body put onto his chest didn't allow him to breathe because it wasn't the cops that killed him. He killed himself because all he had to do was stick his hands out and say, let me go get my punishment. But he didn't do that. But man, they want a payday. And I could go down the line. Philando Castile was told multiple times, don't, he says, I got a gun. And the cop says, don't reach, don't, don't reach for it. Don't, 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 Oh, sorry. Got a little musical for you. Anyway, he ends up shooting the dude and they, his girlfriend's like, they just kill him. And it's all on video. All on video. Now, what about this clown, Stephen Clark? Oh, Kevin, there you go, man. You know, you don't like black folks, man. You ain't. Look, let me tell you something. I don't care whose situation this is. It could be black, white. It could be Henry Chang that I'm talking about. Here's what Stephen Clark was doing. Stephen Clark was in his own neighborhood (laughs) where I guess he lived with his grandma. And Stephen Clark is breaking. He's vandalizing. He's breaking into people's property. You ever seen? I've lived in the hood. There are times in when I lived in St. Louis, St. Louis, there'd be dozens of cars with their windows smashed. Dozens. You know who did it? The Stefan Clarks of the world. I'm using my finger quotes. You know who did it? Black teens. Nothing better to do. Out there looking to make a cheap buck. You know, causing you three hundred dollars worth of damage so they can get a dollar thirty five out of your change tray in your car. Or steal your radar detector or steal your, you know, whatever you may have in there. And because people in the in the cities know, don't keep anything of value in your car. So that's what these clowns did. They came there. That's what this clown did, Stephen Clark. He's breaking into things. He's vandalizing. Who knows what's next? Maybe it starts innocently as a car. Then it's just, oh, you know, I'll, I'll go into this shed. And then next thing he's in your house and next thing he's killing people. I don't know what the escalation point is, but I know this. I don't want you in my car. I don't want you in my yard. I don't want you in my house. So somebody sees it. It wasn't Donald Trump. It wasn't the right wing conspiracy. It was somebody from the neighborhood who said there's a young black dude who's out here causing trouble. And you can bet in Sacramento that call happened a lot in various neighborhoods. So the cops show up. And there's a helicopter. This is I, I, I let me tell you something. I had to dig to find this story. All I've heard about is black man got killed by the police officers and all the disruption therein has been caused. And I've talked about this earlier when I was talking about uh, Sterling. The fact of the matter is there hasn't been a whole lot of protesting, has there? You've seen a very different world than you would have seen under Barack Obama. See, because cities got to burn when black thugs get killed or when verdicts are rendered that don't allow the cops to go down when a black man gets himself killed. Okay. But you haven't seen that happen. Little bit of disruption in Sacramento because people want to make money now off of people being killed. Families see it as man. We can get rid of the bad guys and make some money. Let's do this. So long story short, Stephen Clark, they got a helicopter above because this is not exactly Beverly Hills and they're shining the light down on this dude as he's van they've got him they've they've got him dead to right so the helicopter's up up, 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 up. there he is he's about to make a left on crenshaw and he's gonna yeah he's on 13th street and they're watching him do his deal and the police have arrived and they're now going after this guy so he's running running dipping and dodging have you seen dodgeball dive dodge dodge dip dip and dodge anyway he he's dipping and diving and whatever else and finally he come he the cops see him he runs around the corner okay then he decides to give himself up he emerges from around the corner and he's got his hand sticking straight out with his cell phone not up okay sticking out now let me tell you who told me this story because i couldn't i I was digging around going what did this guy do I got asked about Stephen Clark, and I was like, oh, who is that? What's this? Was another cop shooting? And it was a cop, a black cop, who told me what happened. He says, Kevin, he, he doesn't have his hands up. He's got his hands sticking straight out with that cell phone. And he says, 
Now, he's already run from the cops, and they've yelled, stop, 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 whatever. Comes back around the corner with his hand sticking out with his cell phone. Not up, but out. And they blasted him. Now, everybody, I heard the, the interview. Yeah, you didn't have to shoot that boy 20 times. Let me tell you something. Put yourself in a cop circumstance. You want to go home. You're chasing a guy. He's a vandal. You don't know anything about it, but he took off running. When he took off running and came back around that corner, he was dead man walking, period. The the only thing he could have done would have been to lay down and say, officers, I am on the ground and start yelling. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to tell the dude what to do, but that's what I would have done because the minute you come back out, you have to be letting them know I'm not armed. I have a cell phone. It's almost like these guys want to be killed. It's almost like they want it. So these cops didn't go hunting for Stephen Clark. Not to mention, hey, black people that are because all these people are in an uproar in Sacramento. His brother making a scene, you know, at the city council or whatever. The, and, and everybody, Becerra saying, I'm going to look into this. What's to look into? You know what you ought to look into? The vandalism that's occurring in black communities by guys like Stephen Clark that lead to their deaths. How about you look into that? They don't want to do that. Because they need somebody to blame. They want America to feel at fault here. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Where in the heck is Adam Schiff? Welcome everybody, Kevin Jackson here. I've been asking this question for the better part of a week. Adam Schiff was the news. <laughs> this dude was getting around more than, you know, the, the top chick at the brothel, if you know what I'm saying. And I'm trying to figure out where this guy has disappeared to. His face was all over the media. Right, well, you know, Donald Trump, he did collude with the Russians. The Russians, this is Russian, Russian, Russian. It was Russians all over the map. Then Donald Trump uh, kicks out, what, 50, 60 Russians and shuts down their their uh, Russian uh, spy ring up in Seattle. And suddenly there's not even any conversation about Donald Trump or the Russians or anything. And what is he relying on? Stormy Daniels? Where is this guy? Probably asking Mueller to interview Stormy Daniels. Uh, Mueller, I think that Stormy Daniels is related to the Russians or... Her surname is Russian. We ran her ancestry. And undoubtedly, Daniels is a Russian name. Her real name is Daniel Stoyaskeski or something. What is he doing? Or maybe he's he's working with the FBI to figure out where to deploy David Hogg next. You know, that Hitler-looking youth? Sig Heil, David. Sig Heil. (laughs) Where's this guy been? He is persona non grata. Now, I did read where he got... A bunch of millions of dollars for early earthquake detection or whatever else, you know, bringing home that bacon to California. But he's been out of the loop. And so has the real the narrative of all these other things. Now, is he relying on, uh, you know, the idea of, uh, uh, you know, Trump's stock market going down? Fine. I don't know. Because here's the deal. Donald Trump's approval rating is going up. And that's not good news for Adam Schiff. Now, why is a Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump's approval rating going up? I don't know. Maybe it has to do with this good economy. I realize the stock market's taking a bit of a hit, but it's going to do that for a little bit. But it's come. It's rising. And I've already told you guys, wait on the tsunami that's coming. It's coming, baby. It's coming. The Chinese are now going, hey, we got to get on board. The Russians are going to get on board, even though they expel some diplomats. That's just tit for tat. We are not going to lose any battles when it comes to how we go about our world affairs as long as Donald Trump is in charge and as long as this economy continues to boom and it's going to. Next, we're not at war. Yeah, Donald Trump is still bombing ISIS. He's still he's killing Al Qaeda people, uh, Al Shabaab and all these other Al's that are out there. If your name is Al, (laughs) is uh, what's his name? Paul McCartney. You can be my bodyguard. Just call me Al. Call me out. Don't call him Al because he might get droned. Donald Trump is kicking Al butt. Al, insert Muslim name here. Al Qaeda, Al Shabaab, Al Shabira, Al Shakira. You name it. He's crushing them. 
But we're not technically at war. He wants out of war. The only war that Donald Trump is willing to fight, that really he'll pick a fight with you, is the war of our economy. And he knows that is a war the United States cannot lose. Despite the media narrative of why Trump shouldn't be elected because it was going to crush the stock market. It was going to create Armageddon throughout the world. Women were going to be aborting babies without even worrying, you know, the, the, uh, care, having to carry babies to term, I guess, is probably the, be- the bigger punishment. And so it, Armageddon didn't happen with Trump. In fact, quite the opposite. What else? He's fighting for America. Undoubtedly, not only against China, against North Korea, against Russia, against the Middle East. He's about to put his foot in Iran's big old Iranian buttocks pretty soon. You're watching a guy do some really interesting things. And here's the final point. Nobody cares about Stormy Daniels. Now, I could add to this, too. I could keep going, right? I could say things like, oh, that Russia narrative has all but disappeared. It's going to disappear. And then when it spins back on to the Democrats, what else? So Adam Schiff, are you out there, baby? I would like to know where you are. He was the king of new media. This dude was getting more time than anchors. He, he was spending more time on TV than Sean Hannity in a given day. Just going, making the rounds. Morning shows, eat, you know, mid morning shows, afternoon shows, late night talk show. I'm um, to all these shows. And he, I even think the dude did late night talk show. As boring as this guy is, they wanted to have him on there. So there he was, Adam Schiff. I don't even know where, because does it matter? Does it matter? Roseanne debuted higher than any of those shows. He should be trying to get on Roseanne's show. Good congratulations to her. We are Twitter buddies. I'm going to try to finagle and give me a spot. Give me a cameo on Roseanne Barr's show. I am. Y'all think I'm kidding. Right now, just so you guys are aware, we are going to set up a meeting with the president of the United States. I told you guys I was going to do it. I'll let you know the details as soon as I can. Yeah. And David Hogg, holy cow, this kid, he's got more uh, skeletons in his closet. He's got more issues, and they have been touting him as a savior of gun control. You want to know why the Democrat Party is struggling? Hillary Clinton remains its leader, as does Barack Obama. They have turned their party over to kids under the guise of gun control because they really believe that gun control is going to get them the, the, the seats they need in 2018 this year. Happy New Year, by the way. I told you guys I'd tell you that to the end of the year. And then lastly, they have hooked, hicked, hitch, hicked, hooked and hicked. They've hitched their wagons to the, the prospect of a porn star bringing down Donald Trump. You don't care about it. And let me tell you a little dirty little secret. The leftists don't care about it. And in fact, it endears Donald Trump to most of them. So you have all these things colliding and the left is scared to death. I don't know how many times I can tell you this, guys. I'm not trying to blow a little sunshine up your, you know, your skirt so you can feel good about yourselves. I'm telling you what I honestly believe, what I feel with the pulse of the nation that I think I have, because I'm going to remind you, I'm going to brag. Yeah, I killed Osama bin Laden. But before I did, after I did that, I told you Donald Trump was going to get elected and he doggone skippy did. So the leadership of the Democratic Party is Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, two long since has beens, uh, David Hogg, Heil Hitler Hogg, and then we've got Stormy Daniels. They name me somebody in the Democratic Party that you feel like is really a player that people go, man, now that person talks. Who? Elizabeth Warren, Volcahannes, Chuck Schumer. You want to re- dust off Harry Reid and bring him out of retirement? Kamala, I'm so stupid, Harris. Is she it? Cory Booker? Give me the, the ingenues, the ones that everybody's grooming. Who, who is it? Is it Luis Gutierrez, the crazy Mexican that, that believes in Aslan and that America was, has stolen Texas and most of you know the other parts of, Me- of Mexico that rightfully belong to her? Who is it? Who do you think is going to inherit this party? It is, the Democrat Party is a party of the far left fringe and the people who are in the middle who used to want to believe, be part of what they thought was righteousness, they've learned is com- they are completely wrong and they are abandoning them in droves. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. 
My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Worst ever for Hollywood. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Worst for Hollywood. Suffering the worst domestic March downturns in its recent history, according to the latest Comscore box office figures. Can't say I feel bad about this. Can't say I'm apologetic on behalf of Hollywood. Quite the contrary. Oh, contraire, Hollywood. You get what you deserve. Good for you. Wow. Terrible figures. They say by Sunday, the month's total box office intake was approximately seven hundred and twenty two point five million, a twenty seven percent fall compared to the same time last year with releases such as Pacific Rim Uprising and Tomb Raider failing to bring in audiences relative to their large budgets. Also, anybody want to take a guess as to what movie propped up Hollywood? Hmm. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's got black in it. <laughs> black Panther generated $200 million this month alone is becoming the highest grossing superhero film in history. And from one of my buddies went to see it, Chris, he says, Kevin, it's an amazing film. He goes, I really enjoyed it. He goes, I hate all the, ho- the Hollywood hype. He goes, you don't, you don't get uh, all the black exploitation crap they put in there, even though I saw a trailer of what the guy did with the, the, for example, the black, the green and the red coloring, you know, for the motherland and the various flags of black, you know, uh, I don't know, black power movement, whatever you want to call it. If different flags in Africa have lots of black, red and white, a green rather in it. So it has all this symbolism, but, it, but he says very entertaining film worth seeing. And I said, you know what? I'll catch it when it gets to video or when it's on TV. It won't take long. But 200 million of that came from one film. Highest grossing superhero film in history had to save Hollywood, who, by the way, still had a 27 percent fall compared to the same period last year. Hey, Hollywood, are you there? Is this thing on Hollywood? Are you paying attention? Because here's the deal. We're not. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Kevin Jackson is who you're listening to, folks. This is the Kevin Jackson Show, KJRadio.com. And I'm going to tell you something. Every time these guys buck the system, think they can beat us at our own game, we kick their butt. Roseanne re- debuted her, her reunion show. You know, reunion, she's back now on TV with her TV show, her sitcom. 20 years later, kids grown up. And she does a tribute to Donald Trump 
argues with her lefty sister, who probably is a lefty in real life. Suzanne isn't. And she has blockbuster ratings, 18 million viewers. I don't know how that compares to other people but or other shows, but probably pretty good. I bet you Jimmy, uh, what's his face? Not uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel. I bet he'd love to have 18 million people watching him. Because Lord knows he's not getting that many. So Suzanne, uh, Roseanne gets that many folks watching her show, gets a tweet from the president, a call from the president saying congratulations. And you know why she got it? Because she was pro Donald Trump. Yeah, they can take Tim Allen's show off of TV. It was in its it was a highest rated show on a CBS or whatever it was on. And they took it off anyway. And you would think Hollywood would catch, get the lesson and say, look, I'm tired of alienating well over half of our population. Because I can tell you this, God is my witness. I haven't seen a film. I can't remember the last time I went to the movies to see a film. Can't remember. If it weren't for cable and the occasional me having to make fun of, you know, these Hollywood shows, I wouldn't even know what movies are out. And and the, and most of us we don't even care. Do, do you know who won Best Picture three years ago? Because I don't. I don't think most of you do. Unless you're a movie fanatic, you're into it. I don't think you know. And more importantly, I don't think you care. Seven hundred and twenty-two point five million, a twenty-seven percent fall. Hey, look. Here's what I do want to tell you. On September the seventh, Bleeding Blue comes out. That's my movie. I want us to show Hollywood. That we can we can make a film that the conservative people want to see and they will go to the box office and see it. I want to do a save the date, September the 7th, save the date. It's not going to be all over the place. You may have to drive a little bit to get to it, but I hope you will. I wish I had the budget to open it over, uh, open it up all over the country. Black Panther saving Hollywood. Here's what they go on to say. Nevertheless. The revenue makes grim viewing for the industry compared with 2017, where in the same period, the industry grossed nine hundred and ninety seven point three million and one point two billion through the entire month, driven by successes such as Beauty and the Beast, Logan, the Boss Baby, the Hollywood Reporter noted. So it took three movies to do that. And I think I'm not sure where I saw Boss Baby. But I did see that. I'm not, I thought it was a, like a rental or something like that. But um, long story short, I do remember seeing it. But I, I'm almost positive it was on, on cable or something else. But I do remember that. I didn't see Beauty and the Beast. I saw. I didn't see Logan at the theater. I saw it on cable or, you know, my whatever they call it. Yeah, cable. So they say the last hope for box office bounce back lies with Steven Spielberg's $175 million science fiction film, Ready Player One, which opens on Thursday. They need something. Unbelievable. And so they go on to say this, a reliance on one title, namely Black Panther, to do the heavy lifting, while a host of newcomers over the past few weeks have faltered to one degree or another, has resulted in a deficit situation that will take some time to, to reverse. This is a guy by the name of Paul God, how do you say this guy's name? Dirk Arabian of Comscore. He says, what should have been March Madness in the wake of a ma- the massive performance by Black Panther turned to box office sadness. So in other words, Black Panther dragged people to the theater where they should have, they got to see all the trailers and they got to see all the different things that are coming out that's already still out. Uh, it was coming off of, uh, you know, the, the different award shows. Like water, what's that one that did one best picture, something like water monster or whatever. All these things happening and it couldn't drag. It was kind of like, you know, Black Panther was Barack Obama and it couldn't drag Hillary Clinton's big old buttocks over the finish line. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. Couldn't do it. Box office sadness. You know what that translates to? Let me explain to you people because you ain't paying attention. Hey, you, you stop passing notes. Stop passing notes. Hush up over there. See, I'm the teacher telling you what to do. I'm the professor about to kick some people out of class. Let me tell you what this means. This means Hollywood isn't commanding your attention the way it did in the past. No, it is not. This means the Hollywood people who believe that they know exactly how to predict you and get you into the box office have failed. And what it also means, bigger picture wise, is leftism is failing. 
Yeah, if you want to, this is a sign, people, that you, you, you have become much more discerning with your dollar. Ask Target, ask Starbucks, ask the NFL. Do you think the NFL is going to have a stellar year this year? Come on, baby. Give it to me. I can take it. 844-551-8255 if you want to give me your opinion on these things. Hollywood is suffering. The leftist movement is suffering. Leftism, progressivism, whatever you want to call it, is suffering, and rightfully so, because it is imploding on itself. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. So I talked the other day about this, <laughs> these Disney princesses, and I thought I'd covered it. I was like, you know, I, I pretty much gave that everything that I needed to. And then I, I got to thinking more about the subject, and I got the more I thought about it, the more I got mad. I really did. And so anyway, one of my buddies tweeted me this. He says, statistically, at least two Disney princesses have had abortions, (laughs) which was funny because, you know, he's he's probably right. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, You know, he's he's joking about it, saying, hey, Kev, yeah, if you look at the you know, if you look at the demographics of it all, I don't know how many Disney princesses there are, but, you know, X number of women have had abortion. I just found it kind of kind of humorous. But but beyond that, it got me upset because, see, as I said before, the left is on a mission to defile everything good and wholesome. And their most recent attack against Disney princesses only goes to prove my point. They they deleted the tweet. Planned Parenthood got a so, you know, they knew it was going to be a bad thing when they did it. And so like all these leftists, they deleted the tweet. See, they run from the things that they say. I've said a lot of things that people go, Kevin, that's controversial. I go, nothing I say is controversial. It's not controversial. It may test your sensibilities. It's not controversial. Nothing I've said since I started doing political commentary have I for even remotely said I'm going to backtrack on. Right now, Laura Ingram backtracked on something about David Hogg because uh, I maybe I think she kind of went after him and said this get, guy couldn't even get into colleges. He got rejected by colleges. Oh, there she's attacking a child. So they went after her sponsors. Let me tell you, Laura Ingram would not have apologized to David Hogg. I'm going to tell you right now, if Fox didn't ring her up and say, hey, Laura, we're getting a lot of negative feedback from the comments you made about Hogg. P- apologize because they had me when I, I made the comment that the FBI could have potentially wanted to do some harm to Donald Trump. Oh, Kevin, because I, I was given the scenario of we don't know what those tweets meant from. They could be very innocent or they could be something very sinister. You're not saying that the FBI would do something to Trump. I go, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the possibility exists that they could. Even when I walked, when I explained it, Fox called me. And said, Kevin, uh, you you know, we uh, really don't want to be talking about that. And, you know, saying that the FBI might do something to the president. I said, that's not what I said. I said, it's a possibility in the range of possibilities. And st- could not get them to understand. And so the po- here's the thing. Well, we just don't like to generate any controversy at Fox. And I go, well, fat chance, Fox, because you know what? They're, whatever you say, whoever you have on it, it doesn't matter who says it, it's going to be considered controversial. Get used to it. The other side of the media has demonized you. They've put you into the category of conservative, even though Fox is far from it. And you're going to get demonized no matter who's on the show and no matter what they say. And, and it's strange to me that the, I mean, here you are in media and I'm from the saying, all news is good news. And they're like, oh, we don't want to be a part of that controversy. What controversy? You, by nature of who you are, are controversial. That's just what Fox is about. Anyway, that's why Laura apologized. But here's the deal. I wasn't apologizing. I'm not apologizing for giving you a true scenario of what possibly could happen because I don't trust this FBI. But Laura backtracked and did whatever she had to do. Back to Planned Parenthood. They removed their tweet and tried to pretend that they didn't say this. We need a Disney princess who's had an abortion. We need a Disney princess who's pro-choice. We need a Disney princess who's an undocumented immigrant. We need a Disney princess who's a union worker. We need a Disney princess who's trans. They did abortion, pro-choice, just call that the same thing, undocumented immigrant, 
Union and trans. They want a Barbie or some sort of a, you know, Disney character that is a trans union worker, undocumented immigrant who's had an abortion. Apparently, that will make Planned Parenthood happy. So the delete, the post rather, was deleted about two hours after they published it, but people grabbed it and then it went, they went up, people went off on it. Now, as I said before, if, def, if, if Disney characters were rewritten by leftists snow white would be knocked up by one of the seven dwarfs and then we see her on an episode of maury right and they're going to be trying to determine which of the dwarfs knocked up uh, uh, snow white because all the boys had a and i'm using my finger quotes a party with snow white that evening after they had some quaaludes and some drinks now snow white when she comes out on Mari, she's going to be an antagonistic person to the audience going, y'all don't know me. Shut up, y'all witches, except she'll use the B word. And she'll be like, y'all don't know. Don't try to judge me. I can just see Snow White doing this, right? And then so when they ask her, you know, why would you have sex with all seven brothers? She would say, because that's how I rose, baby. That's how we do it here in the, the enchanted forest. <laughs> so... This is the way I see Snow White if they rewrote the picture, you know, rewrote this character. What about Cinderella? You can bet Cinderella would be some transsexual who was abused by her very conservative stepmother and stepsisters who teased her for her boyish qualities, right? And then she'd run away with Prince Charming who of course would be gay and he liked her boyish qualities and and he was really not prince charming he's actually a sex trafficker named lucius <laughs> i'm cracking myself up oh man so get this cinderella breaks free from lucius's powerful hole cuz he's got a sexia a sexual hold. That's how black old black people say sexual. They say sexual. He's got a sexual hold over uh, Cinderella, who, by the way, probably changed her name. To, I don't know what Stormy Daniels. Okay, let's call her Stormy. And she moves in with an illegal illegal migrant worker and helps him in his plight to unionize day laborers. I'm just saying, what possible scenario could you come up with that the leftists are going to write about these characters, given what Planned Parenthood wanted to do? To the Disney princesses, Mulan and Belle and I don't know. What's the one? Uh, I always I always thought this one was just hot. As far as Disney's char- Disney characters go, no, no, not the Little Mermaid. Even though, yeah, she's kind of hot. She just needs feet. No, the one who was Aladdin's uh, girlfriend, love interest or whatever you want to call it. Man, that gr- the Disney character, for her, what was her name? I can't remember. Anyway, she was beautiful. Beautiful. Big old, you know, br- uh, brown eyes. Yeah, just stunning. They always make those girls stunning. Yeah, when you wish upon a star. <laughs> I am Jones in a little bit for her. Yeah, yeah, she's pretty. If she, the real life version of her, psh, could have all my lunch money. That's all I got to say. She could have all my lunch money. Amanda Prestigiamo said this from the Daily Wire. She says, there's a lot of unanswered questions about the prospects of abortion princess though. Will the devices used to perform abortions abortions be included, like forceps and manual vacuum aspiration? You know, with they with the young girl who gets the the doll, the abortion princess doll, get to suck the child out of the uterus. <laughs> and she says, Will we get a breakdown of the cost of the procedure? What about the the uh, Planned Parenthood, will they get to take the fetal tissue? Will, will the physical and emotional scars so often left for women who've had an abortion be acknowledged? Of course not. Come on, Daily Wire. But it does make one wonder about the potential to rewrite these iconic characters, as I've already done to some degree. See, I could see abortion Barbie complete with a bloody baby and a release that you would have to sign to sell the baby parts to, I don't know, Planned Parenthood Barbie. And what about the wife beater Ken? Oh, yeah. What about handsome Harvey, the sex abuser? That's a doll people could go for. That doll. Disney should should get the rights to handsome Harvey, the sex abuser. Cause, and it would come, that doll would come with a casting couch. Oh, yeah. yeah. See how much fun this can be when you put the leftism in it? All the female dolls of Disney 
and other dolls that you you know that they would maybe get the rights to would have lesbian counterparts just in case you know and they they'd be renamed for iconic feminists like the chelsea handler barbie super slut edition and what about hillary clinton barbie the one that would scream at bill give excuses to why she lost to trump you know, and, and whatever, what, what else would Hillary's doll do? Oh, it would cheat you out of your money. You, you'd wake up in the middle of the night and your money would be gone. But why should we stop at Disney characters? Let's just go after everything that's sacrosanct, like Christmas. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, Hall, uh, Slate did a scorching review of Hallmark's Christ, 25 Days of Christmas. And here's what they wrote. They bream with white heterosexuals who exclusively, emphatically, in, and endlessly bellow Merry Christmas to every lumberjack and labradoodle they pass. They centered on the beauty pageant heroines and strong-jawed heroes with, with white nationalist haircuts. That's what they wrote about Christmas. Now, Todd Starnes of Fox commented on Slate's article and said there were complaints about the lack of gay people and feminists and Muslims in Hallmark Channel's movies. Slate also whined about what it called the network's 42 hours of sugary, sexist, preposterously plotted, plot hole uh, festooned, belligerently traditional, ecstatically Caucasian cheer. Oh, you got to get that Caucasian in there because you can't have people, you know, we're being concerned about white folks. Now, how often is that? Hallmark paying tribute to heterosexuals of the worst kind. White people. And what we've learned in the era of Obama is America's too white, it's too hetero, and let's just cut to the chase. The Hallmark Channel is too conservative. And apparently so is Disney. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. I think this would be great if the Democrats would actually, I guess I shouldn't say God's ears, but maybe the head of the DNC's ears. I think it would be great if the Democrats would run on this. I think it's it's honest. I have to give uh, them credit for being honest. They believe in sanctuary cities. They don't want to fix the immigration system. They want to give amnesty to absolutely everybody who's here That's illegally. That's ridiculous, Matt, and, and you know it. Well, no, I think, I think, I think. Let's be honest. I think where Democrats are in their policy is that they want to give amnesty to as many people as possible. It's not just about the DACA population. And I actually think when you have sanctuary cities all across this country, how come people like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer aren't calling these mayors out and saying, "Let's enforce our laws"? The fact is, they want a sanctuary nation, and it's great politics for the Republicans, but it's terrible for the country. That was Matt Schlapp of the American Conservative Union puts on CPAC every year speaking about uh, sanctuary cities sanctuary cities are illegal they're stupid they're, i mean what else you want to say about it they're illegal stupid all of it they shouldn't exist they don't exist in reality but we've uh, allowed them to exist thanks for turning up my microphone i can hear better what's that i feel like i'm one of these old people got a hearing aid huh what hello uh, what is that sound <laughs> and coulter spoke out on immigration as well let's hear ann's clip Everything gets better with a wall on deportations. Immigration makes everything easier. Entitlements, the drug problem, um, theft of government oh, entitlements. services. Oh, Ryan hasn't rights. even started on entitlements, and you must leave some of your venom for him. 
Well, uh, Paul Ryan? Uh -huh. um, well, if you would. I will. Um, my venom toward him is, instead of bringing in lots of immigrants who then bring in their elderly relatives who immediately go on Medicare and Social Security and then tell Americans, you have to tighten your belt, we're raising the retirement age. How about don't raise the retirement age, but limit Social Security and Medicare to Americans? Here, here. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. KJRadio.com. Immigration. Why are we talking about this? Uh, one of the guys, his name is Educating Liberals. He, he tweeted this. Liberals, there's no way possible we could round up and deport 11 million legal immigrants. Also liberals. Confiscating 350 million firearms from 120 million gun owners would not be that hard. You know, and I love when people put things in perspective in clever ways like that. And that's exactly what this guy just did. He just explained liberalism at its finest. The idea that you, one thing is impossible to do to round up 11 million people, by the way, pretty easy to do. This census is doing it. Did you hear the new report? They say as many as 24 million people won't fill out the census. Why? Because they're afraid of the boogeyman. So I think we just maybe got our number. We've been debating how many people here are in America legally versus illegally. And now we have a number. They actually said, I'm not, you guys will think I'm kidding. It's it. They said 24.3 million people. Now it's almost impossible to know how many people there are right now in the United States, but I heard it was 318 million. I don't know if that's good or bad, you know, right or wrong, whatever. So roughly 8% of the U.S. population is illegals. 7.6% if you use the 24.3 million divided by 318 million. So give or take. So let's just go out on a limb and say that for the, for the sake of discussion to make it easier. It's 7% because it's 7.6% with those numbers. And I'll even take it down to 6% just to give us some wiggle room. 6% of the population illegal. So ask yourself, what is our gross domestic product of the United States of America, which now is estimated to be about $17 trillion. So if you multiply that times 6%, then you get a number of, let me do it here. I'm going to do the math. 17 times 0.06 equals. So a trillion dollars of our economy goes to illegals. If we use those numbers, 6%. So while they want to tell you it's impossible to round them up, it costs too much money, they contribute to the economy, it's costing us over a trillion dollars. Now, if you want to go look at what a trillion dollars is in terms of GDP around the world, how big would you be if you had a trillion dollar economy? It would put you in the top 20 economies in the world. What we do to support people that aren't even supposed to be here. Now, that's a tribute to how productive America is, because let me tell you something. The illegals are not contributing a, a trillion dollars into our economy. Quite the opposite. They are sucking it out. So not only are you responsible for the 17 trillion dollars that's being created, part of that is being drained away. A significant part of that's being drained away. It isn't like it's it's all being put back into the economy because much of this money goes overseas. And not just to Mexico, it goes to other places too. The biggest abuser of this, of course, is Mexico. So I'm working with a, a group, um, the FAIR. They're an anti, well, they're an immigration group. I don't, they're, they're not an anti-immigrant group. They're an anti-illegal immigrant group. And uh, they also believe at times that we do need to limit the number of legal immigrants coming into the country. Because sometimes, you know, your, your policy should bring in the best and brightest, certainly in a country like America. But I'm working with those guys, proudly so. And uh, they want to prevent, every year they tend to have an, an event and they try to prevent the people <laughs> from, uh, people that are coming into this country from killing citizens and things like this, like this Oakland mayor. Talk about law and order breaking down with this mayor, her name is Schaff warning illegals ahead of an ice raid and they fleed. And then three of those illegals got arrested for new crimes, all of which could have been avoided if Schaff had not tipped them off. But you know what she says? I didn't do anything wrong. Now I was wondering what should be the fallout for this type of thing. Shouldn't 
the mayor of Oakland, given the chain of events that occurred, shouldn't she be held responsible? I want you to imagine for just a second, if this woman had were held responsible for the crimes committed by these folks, how many people do you think would want to stand up for the rights of illegals? The ones that they say, oh, they commit crimes at the same rate as U.S. citizens do. Okay, if you want to go that route, let's go that route. But let's get them down to the demographic. Let's look at them based on the economic level and the situational politics of those people. If that's the case, illegals commit a lot of crime generally in their own neighborhoods. And we know this to be a fact. In fact, the crimes that were committed by these people that were arrested One was a Mexican national who was arrested for robbery and gun crimes released back into the community for a prior offense, despite having what they call an ICE detainer. Another one was arrested for a DUI, despite having been deported three times and prior convictions for false imprisonment, DUI and battery of a spouse. The third was a Mexican national who was arrested for corporal injury of a spouse, despite twice being deported, criminal convictions including drug possession, hit and run, DUIs, possessions of narcotics equipment, and a parole violation. These are the people that were released and then they caught them. How many people are still out there? What what jackets, as they call it, what jackets do they have at the police? This is, you know, the... I always get into this discussion with people and I say to myself, it is crazy that we even entertain something so idiotic as to say, well, you know what? Uh, These illegals, they're looking for work. They're looking for this. They're looking for that. This is all crazy. Let me tell you, there's a a story that's going to break this week. They've already talked about it, but there's leaching from Mexico of contaminants into the soil that's getting into San Diego And here's a a bigger part of the story. It's already come out, but you you should know about it anyway. There's a county in San Diego. uh, I believe, no, I'm sorry, a city in San Diego County who's going to join in the lawsuit against the state of California for sanctuary cities. They're tired of having to deal with the problems. Now, that's going to make two. But the bigger issue is we're talking about an area that's, you know, California is a land of fruits, nuts, and fairies, as we know, but we're talking about Liberal areas, L.A. County, Orange County saying, yeah, we're going to do it is one thing. Orange County's heavily Republican. It's one of the only Republican enclaves in, in California. But now we got San Diego saying the same thing. And my question is, when does the bow break? When do other people in California start realizing, you know what? We're paying a lot for other people's services. There are estimates, believe it or not, as high as 30 percent of some of these municipalities are made up of illegals. That's a big number. So imagine you've been paying taxes and you find out 30% of your money is going to people who really aren't paying taxes. Let me tell you, moving to Arizona has been an eye opener too. There are places that they only speak Spanish. They, Kevin, you got to go to this little place, but here's the thing, man. If you, you, you got to be able to speak Spanish because this only guy over there, he's only speak Spanish. And I'm like, well, lucky, I guess I do, but That's just amazing to me in America, places that exist where only Spanish is spoken. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Chuck Todd did a tweet and he says, I'm a bit hokey when it comes to Good Friday. I don't mean disrespect to the religious aspect of the day, but I love the idea of reminding folks that any day can become good. All it takes is a little selflessness on our own part. Works every time. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. See, that is the flippant response to the most holy holiday for Christians by Chuck Todd, MSNBC's Chuck Todd. He doesn't mean any disrespect to the religious aspect of Good Friday, but I don't even know any of the religious aspects of Good Friday. That's essentially what Chuck Todd is saying. I don't even have enough 
uh, respect for your religion. To, I'm going to go find out what Good Friday means. I'm a bit hokey when it comes to Good Friday. No, Chuck, you're a bit hokey when it comes to life in general. Any day can be Good Friday. Hey, so what? Christ is risen on Sunday, you know, the, 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 all of the religious aspects of this as it pertains to the Christianity. Do you think Chuck Todd would say anything close to that on anything related to Muslims or dare he lose his head? It's amazing to me how flippant leftists have treat Christianity like we're just a bunch of pfft, who cares? You know, they take us for granted. Who cares? They're just a bunch of sanctimonious Christians out there trying to do good in the world. Chuck Todd has more respect for Kwanzaa than he does for Easter. I promise you he does. He has more respect for Kwanzaa than he does for Christmas. <laughs> because that's the way they're trained. And see, dare, how, how dare Chuck decide to actually do his journalistic duty and understand what the aspects of, I don't care if you practice it, understand it. It would be like, you know, if, you, if I'm going to talk about the Quran. I'm going to at least go research what it's about. I I rarely talk about Muslims other than the fact that they tend to blow up a lot of things. But if I'm going to have a deep discussion about it from a religious perspective, I'm going to go out and find out what the deal is. I do understand that it was written based on uh, the length that they the way the Quran is laid out. It's based on the length of the books and not chronologically. I learned that from friends and that. Muhammad gets begins really altruistic and, and philanthropic and wanting to do good. And by the end of the Quran, he is a bad dude. Unlike Saul of Tarsus, who becomes Paul, he does an opposite transformation. He's a cause Saul was a bad guy, a warrior who would as soon kill you as to look at you, who became good when he was struck on his way, I think to Damascus. Right. And so he became a good guy. Muhammad started out good and suddenly whew, over time became bad and it's choppy. The Quran is choppy. And I learned this from experts. So my point is this, if if I'm going to have a discussion, if, if they were to say, Kevin, let's discuss Ramadan. I wouldn't say, look, I don't understand the religious aspects of Ramadan, but I think Ramadan's really serious and anybody could just do Ramadan. I wouldn't say that. I don't know enough about Ramadan. Do they have a big turkey meal? I might say something like, I don't know a lot about Ramadan, but they eat turkey and it kind of reminds me of Thanksgiving. No disrespect intended. I, I think it would be more than just about eating turkey, which, by the way, uh, so is Thanksgiving. These guys are so flippant in how they deal with us. And you know what Chuck Todd needed? He needed a pastor to just come up and slap him right in his mouth. I know y'all are out there. Kevin, man, you are so violent. Man, yeah. You remember when Jesus went into the temple and he turned over all the, the tables and all this because of the, you know, what was happening inside of there? The corruption that Jesus would have slapped Chuck Todd. Y'all think I'm playing, but he don't be laughing at me. Jesus would have slapped Chuck Todd. Kevin, you talking about Jesus? With Jesus, that wouldn't have been a sin. Well, he, don't hold, don't, don't hold up a sin sign to me. Don't even do it. That would not have been a sin. Jesus would have said, "What did you just say, Chuck Todd?" Pow! Don't you ever say something like that. Good Friday. Man, he has no idea. I mean, how disrespect, I don't mean any disrespect, but here's some disrespect. Isn't it funny? Every time somebody, look, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but here's some disrespect for you. You know, I like the people that go, I'm not trying to get all in your business, but I'm about to get all in your business. <laughs> it's always that warning beforehand. Look, I don't want to sound racist, but <laughs> here's some racial stuff. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know what I, I love about religious people? is we can admit our faults, we can laugh at ourselves, and we recognize the goodness in the world. We really do. We look for goodness in the world. We don't look for problems, and we certainly don't try to create them. When we create problems, you know what we do? Because we will. When I say you don't try to create problems, it doesn't mean that you don't create problems, because the devil is always there. But what you do, Christians, is you correct your problems. You self-correct. You have a button inside of you. It's called a heart. <laughs> it's called a core. And that button self corrects. You understand when you've done something wrong and you want to do right. And there's something driving you. And let me tell you that as a person who has, you know, has these uh, multiple religious conversions, because, you know, my grandmother said, boy, you backslided, you backslid. 
<laughs> you know what backsliding is? You're religious and then you do something bad. And you're, you're my grandmother, who's very spiritual, would go, and religious, she would go, boy, you backslide. Or she would say, he backslid like the pastor. Pastor was messing around with one of the women in church. He backslid. No, he had an affair and, you know, whatever. So that's, but that's the way they do it. But you backslide. You do. You, or you lose your religion, but you really don't lose your religion. You, you move farther away from God and then you find yourself coming back. But here's what I want to talk about. The Saudi crown prince met with New York rabbis in, in an interfaith gesture while he was here. I want to tell you that happened because of Donald Trump. People can overlook. That's a small thing to happen in the scheme of things in the world, but it's huge because it would have never happened under Obama. You know it. I know it. Leftists know it. Can you imagine one of the most powerful Muslim nations in the world? The guy who runs that nation now says to the Jewish people, I want to meet with you. And they had an interfaith meeting. Here's another thing that happened over the Easter holiday. The religious. uh, I don't want to call it a holiday because it's a bit too big, much of a significance. But a Muslim family in full hijab asked if their kids could join an Easter egg hunt of a guy, buddy of mine on Twitter they're Southern Baptists that they were doing in the park and all the kids were running around together having a blast, <laughs> pardon the pun, <laughs> but they were having a good time. <laughs> OK, Muslim family asked, could they join in a Christian celebration? Now, see, I think that's cool. I don't care what they want to practice, if they want to keep their women covered and things like that. That's up to them. That's like the Amish. They have a strange religion. But to want to participate. See, that's God working in our lives and the media is not going to tell you these things they don't want you to know that the Saudis reached out to the Jews and this other thing we'll be back next time this is the Kevin Jackson radio show do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state the secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation my friends at security tax associates provide the most cost effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures levies and wage garnishments security tax associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all for a free no obligation consultation Contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville, author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope. That wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Right after Netflix announced its uh, appointment of Susan Rice to its board of directors, the stock dropped 5%. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Now, you say, what's the big deal? It came back a little bit here and there. Stocks go up and down volatility. I agree. But I'm just telling you, the stock dropped 5%. On the announcement of Susan Rice. Were there other factors? Perhaps. I'll tell you this. Many of us. I'm talking about conservatives. Immediately started considering. What do we want to do with Netflix? 
Is there anybody out there that, that competes against them that we need to be looking at? Now, here, get this. If you think it's strange that Susan Rice was offered a board at Netflix, here's something else you probably don't know. Chelsea Clinton is on the board of Expedia. Yeah. Here are the people, just for the record, so we know who's fighting against us. So every time you go on to Expedia, every time you use TripAdvisor and all these other sites, believe it or not, these these sites are owned by leftists. Most of them are. Here are the people who decided to fight back against Laura Ingram when she called David Hogg a whiny baby. Here it is. Nutrish, TripAdvisor, Wayfair, Hulu, Nestle, Expedia. Joseph A. Banks and Johnson and Johnson. Those are companies so far who fought back. Go look at those companies. Look at the makeup of their board and it'll tell you everything you need to know. Dominated by leftists. Now, David Hogg thinks he's won because Laura Ingram issued an apology. I'm going to get back to uh, I'm going to get back to Netflix. But David Hogg thinks he's won. He's now a powerful voice. In fact, uh, Allison Camerata actually ask, uh, do we have that clip? Let's play that clip. This is an American issue, and as such, we have to work together. David, I am stunned that four colleges rejected you. What kind of dumbass colleges don't want you? I mean, you've taken the country by storm. How do you explain this? Did they reject you before the Parkland massacre, or, or how do you explain this? They rejected me about... Let me think. Uh, about two weeks ago, most of them, it was uh, UCLA and UCSD. I, the way I explain it is we have a heavily impacted university system in, in America, and I think there's a lot of really good candidates that don't get into college, and I think it goes to show that regardless of whether or not you get into college, you can still change the world. The hardest part is just believing that you can and continuing that effort to change the world because you eventually will. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here, the gushy Gawny, uh, what, what am I trying? Gushy gooey, gushy gooey, fawning over this kid, David Hogg, by Allison Camerata and his excuse. Well, academia doesn't like my type of people. Academia loves this clown. You know what they know? They know this is a Hitler youth in the making. I've, I warned, I sent this kid a message and I sent it out on Twitter. I said, you are the type of kid who is dangerous to any society because all he wants is fame. He wants fame. And he knows how to get it. He knows what that brings, the power, and he will be drunk on power. You can look at this kid and know it. I said it on the show. You can look at him. So here's the media fawning all over this. Ah, I got words for him. And he's, he's, I'm just telling you, dangerous person. Dangerous. So anyway, uh, back to, so Netflix is putting people on these boards. What is Netflix? Netflix. It determines who's what you're going to see. I mean, think about it. Hollywood's suffering. I talked about Hollywood's numbers dropping like crazy. T- terrible uh, numbers in Hollywood for movies right now. Terrible numbers. If it weren't for Black Panther, Hollywood wouldn't even they they would be crying in their uh, you know bourgeois cocktails. So Netflix determines what you're going to see. But look at all these other companies: TripAdvisor, Wayfair. Hulu. Hulu's another one of these services. Expedia. Um, just look at wh- where these people are controlling these capitalists. These are capitalists that are determining things in your life. And what they do is they spread their little poisons around. Hey, come to TripAdvisor and then we'll send you over to Expedia. Oh, by the way, have you checked out Hulu? Joseph A. Banks, Johnson John. I don't look, I'm I'm not following all this. I'm not trying to connect the dots and say there's some sort of cabal and it's a big conspiracy. All I'm telling you is these people protect one another. They they do things that are counterproductive to society, and they figure out a way to do it on our nickel and to keep it in our faces. I remember when I I forget which one it is. It's one of these, uh, you know, trip deals where you can do all. We'll find all your hotels for you for, you know, you don't have to look in in multiple places. We'll find all your hotels. Can't remember the name of the service. I looked up the guy who owned that company because I was doing research on some stock stuff. And he is a dyed in the wool leftist. Every time you use that service, you're putting money into his pocket. 
whether it's Facebook, whether it's Google, all these guys. Now, look, I'm, I, I said earlier, I'm not, I don't know if there's a cabal, but think about if a guy like that goes to Google and says, look, come on, Sergey, we're buddies. We all support the, the greater good. Let's make sure my stuff gets there first. Hey, Facebook, Mr. Zuckerberg, how about you give me preferential treatment? This is not just about the, quote, politics. This is about the politics of your life. You determining what you're going to support. Because at the end of the day, let me tell you what these guys care about. They care about their money. That's what they care about. They care about their money. They care about their power. And the way you have the most power is you amass the most people. And then you take your money and you keep those people supporting you. That's what this government has done to blacks. That's what it's trying to do to women. That's what it's trying to do to Latinos and everybody else that they consider a special interest. Somebody's amassing power and saying, now go get me the people. That's how this works. You got to we must show that David Hogg cannot intimidate Laura Ingram or anybody else. I said before. Laura Ingram apologized to this kid, not because Laura Ingram is an apologist. Laura Ingram was made to apologize by Fox News. They sent her a note saying, you cannot say things about people and generate controversy that comes back to the brand. That's how that happened. And it weakens conservatism when those types of things happen. Weakens it badly. There's a lot of things happening right now in this country that have to be stopped. And Leftists control these types of things. For example, all this hoopla over the census. Yeah, let me tell you what that's about. What that's about is the leftists hate being discovered. They hate when you learn about what their their crimes are. The reason why Netflix stopped fell 5% was when they appointed Susan Rice, everybody went, what the heck? And you knew what happened. Now, the, the, in this particular case, they I don't know how they wouldn't think we'd discover it. It's pretty easy to discover. But with respect to the census, they know if we count the legitimate people in California, they are going to take a hit. Their citizens have been paying for many, many more illegals than they ever envisioned. And what if it turns out that California, uh, you know, has 25 million illegals? Wouldn't surprise me. I don't think any of you would be surprised. How, what do you think the citizens are going to say? Think they're going to be happy about this? How many seats will they lose in the legislature? If it turns out that they have 15, 20 percent illegals, this is what they don't want you to find. And they want to control this process because that's the only way they can win. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Coffee. Is it good or is it bad? It depends on where the money is, isn't it? Uh, I mean, that's, that, that's honestly what determines if, you, if something's good or bad. Uh, study after study, blah, blah, blah. But here's a, here's a report on what's happening with coffee right now in the state of California. Starbucks and other coffee retailers in California now have to put a cancer warning on their coffee, according to a judge in L.A. So a nonprofit group sued dozens of coffee retailers like Starbucks, claiming that a chemical created when you roast coffee beans may cause cancer. The coffee companies say, yeah, the chemicals there, but at a harmless level. And they say it's outweighed by the benefits of imbibing coffee. So the judge ruled against them. So now they do have to come up with some warning. The judge still has to rule, though, on whether they have to pay any fines for it. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com, 844-551-8255. Jot that number down so you can call. Coffee. Carcinogenic. Hey, air. Carcinogenic. (laughs) Water, carcinogenic. Life, carcinogenic. Holy cow. I mean, come on. Yeah, coffee. Is it good for you? Is it bad for you? How many studies have we seen like this? I've talked about this. I probably talked about this when I first started doing radio. What's good for you? One glass of wine 
Oh, no, no. It needs to be red wine because it's got the tannins in it. Oh, no, no, no. Two glasses is even better. No, no. If you do two glasses, you get too much of the tannin, which is carcinogenic. It's a, what? I mean, just where does it end? Like I said, you want to know where it ends, where the money, where the money ends, man, where the money is. That's where it ends because somebody can make something good or bad for you just by virtue of saying, oh, well, I believe it's good or bad. So I need a study that shows that coffee is really good for you. Why? So I can sell a lot more coffee. And then somebody comes along and goes, hey, the tea guys go, they're selling a lot of coffee. We probably ought to say something about how coffee causes cancer. And then somebody buys them off. Yeah, here's I saw this article. Why coffee is good for you. Here are seven reasons. Coffee isn't just warm and energizing. It also may be extremely good for you. I'm not kidding. It says maybe. In recent years and decades, scientists have studied the effects of coffee on various aspects of health and their results have been nothing short of amazing. And here's a couple of them. Coffee can make you smarter. Coffee doesn't just wake you up. It literally makes you smarter as well. The active ingredient in coffee is caffeine, which is a stimulant and mostly consumed uh, the most consumed psychoactive psychoactive substance in the world. Caffeine's primary mechanism in the brain is blocking the effects of an inhibitory neurotransmitter called adenosine. By blocking the inhibitory effects of adenosine, caffeine actually increases neural firing in the brain and the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepamine was norepamine. Many controlled trials have examined the effects of caffeine on the brain, demonstrating that caffeine can improve mood, reaction time, memory, vigilance, general cognitive function. But it comes at a cost. It could be cancer causing ah, dum, dum, dum. the way they the way they roast the beans releases hexene and a bunch of others eens and, you know, eens and isms and isms and itses can be bad for you. <laughs> but I love my cup of coffee in the morning. And you know what? We love it so much. We promote the leftist agenda of people like Star Bucks to the tune of billions of dollars every year. Had Howard Schultz laughing all the way to the bank until he finally screwed up and you know got too political and made people mad. Coffee, one of the most expensive products per ounce on on the market. <laughs> And nobody bothers these guys either. I was looking, thinking about this. You know, if you were drilling for, if you have to drill for coffee versus, you know, burning this carcinogenic bean, would it, would it be any better? Yeah, you know, the coffee drillers, you know, these people that are, that are going out there on these uh, platforms out in the North China Sea drilling for coffee, they're polluting the environment with their leftover remnants of coffee grinds. I don't know what they would do, but you get what I'm saying. If coffee were oil, It would have been demonized long before now, but I don't know who's going after coffee, but now we're learning that it can be bad for you. All kinds of things I read in this report that said coffee, good seven reasons. And I only gave you one. I just gave you one. It releases more endorphins. Let's face it. That first cup of coffee, it's delicious. The smell of it in the morning just wakes all kinds of senses. It reminds me of my grandmother. It really does. Such a great feeling because that that was the first time I ever smelled coffee was with my grandparents, you know, when I was growing up or I should say realize what was going on. And so I would get up in the morning and my grandfather was going to drink his coffee. My grandmother had made it for him. And it reminds me of that. It's got this a uh, tug at me beyond just the uh, the taste of it. Now, I, I never thought coffee tasted good until I was in Hawaii and I got a cup of Kona coffee and I was like, oh. I mean, it was like God himself had jumped into that cup and stirred it. I mean, it was so delicious. It reminds me of the first time I tasted crafted beer at Gordon Biersch. One of my best friends took me to Gordon Biersch in San Jose. And I went, oh, this is beer. This is what beer is supposed to taste like. Not this crap I've been getting. You know, the Schlitz my grandparents used to buy. And when I got old enough to drink, I drank. No, it wasn't that. It was that crafted beer. So here's this Kona coffee. I was like, whoa, what is this? You know, then I found out the cost. Hey, have you drank this monkey butt coffee? My sister bought some of that. It's like, I don't know. It's like $50 or a hundred bucks for a bag of it. It's crazy. It's you might as well buy crack or gold ingots or something. 
It should be called Coffee Rush instead of this, this show called Gold Rush. It should be Monkey Butt Coffee Rush because it's as expensive to mine as gold. It's crazy. But is it good for you? Is it bad for you? So I did a little thing. I looked at some of these stories about. I just Googled coffee. You know, coffee, good or bad. And here's what I got. Coffee and health. What does the research say? This is from the Mayo Clinic. You can look these up yourself. And so I'm going, what do you mean? What does the research, coffee, what does the research say? Tell me what the research says. Here's the beginning of it because I got it here. In addition, some studies found that two or more cups of coffee a day can increase the risk of heart disease in people with a specific and fairly common genetic mutation that shows the breakdown of caffeine in the body. So how quickly you metabolize coffee may affect your health risk, although coffee may have fewer dot, dot, dot. That's where that one ends. The next one was CNN. Is coffee healthy? It was from March 9th of 2018 this year. Is chocolate good or bad for health? Decaf is not no calf. So if you have if you're drinking three cups of decaf per day, then I would restrict that. Buffalino said of people with heart conditions as for coffee's effects on bone health. Caffeine and coffee can lead to calcium loss, but it's probably not worth worrying about. Okay, Whew. I'm still undecided here. I don't know about you. Here's the next one. It's another CNN. And this one was from January 31st of 2018. Health effects of coffee. Where do we stand? <laughs> Only two months later, they're still asking the question. This is CNN on in March of 9th, July, January 31st of 2018. Here's what they what CNN said about coffee. Mostly good. But first, a negative. A 2001 study found that 20% increase in the the risk of urinary tract cancer risk for coffee drinkers, but not tea drinkers. Mm -hmm. See, we're starting to see the connect the dots here. It's the tea people that are going after coffee. That finding was repeated in 2015 meta-analysis. So if there is a risk factor in your family history, you might want to switch to tea. Then in March 9th of 2018, is coffee good or bad for you? That one I just read earlier. So CNN, two months later, is asking the same question. How much did the tea people pay for Pay for this? I don't know. And then here's one, January 23rd of 2018 in health.com. Is coffee actually good for you? They keep asking the question. Nobody goes, coffee is definitively good for you. We did a survey. Here's the bad. Here's the good. The good way outweighs the bad so here you go boom they give you all these things if you're a beta factor if you have a risk of this if you suffer from this geologically genetically whatever then you may not want to drink coffee yeah or you may not want to eat broccoli or you may not want to you know eat an orange or if you're lactose intolerant hey avoid milk hey you have a fish allergy don't eat fish stuff you know nothing definitive here's one newsweek from 2017 in November health benefits of coffee three or four cups per day does far more dot 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 so you got to click business insider they were definitive why coffee is good for you that was October 14th of 2017 is coffee actually good for you how many cups of year is a day rather is considered healthy is drip coffee worse than espresso I mean, somebody wants to get to the bottom of it. And here's what I'm going to tell you, folks. In 2019, you're going to get coffee studies. In 2020, you're going to get coffee studies. Who's paying for all these studies that don't give us any more information about whether we should drink coffee, shouldn't drink coffee? Is it one cup a day? Is it four cups a day? That's the joke of it all, people. The FDA has approved every drug that has ever been recalled, but the government wants you to know it can tell you what to do about coffee. And California wants to legislate it. Hey, Starbucks. Put a warning on your coffee. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 
844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. end to identity politics this is the kevin jackson radio show you want some news i'm gonna give you some news cnn is gonna have a town hall for james comey i'm talking about crooked comey former (laughs) head of the fbi can you believe they're giving this dude a i mean he's gonna have carte blanche to, to tell his side of the story Oh, man. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's a Kevin Jackson show. So glad you're with me. I'm glad to be able to share these little tidbits with you. James Comey, one of the most crooked people to ever be in the FBI, is going to get, the, I'll say, the full attention of the nation, which means they'll get about as many people that will watch a, you know, a, a, a public access channel, <laughs> CNN. But actually, you know what? People are going to tune in to hear to, to hear Comey. They are. It's a commercial. It's a commercial. It, this is a fight back. I would love for CNN to do Comey. And then have uh, somebody who could counter Comey at the, you know, like, for example, with the NRA, they want to have an NRA thing, have people ask questions of, of, you know, Comey that are going to ask tough questions. Like, why did you say this during the testimony, but you said this here? Now, do you believe that the audience CNN is going to assemble for Comey is going to be a tough audience or is it going to be one of those CNN audiences? Because I'm going to tell you, if it was a tough audience asking Comey, I would, if I were his lawyer, I would advise him against it. Remember, everybody said, Donald Trump shouldn't talk to Mueller. Don't even bother to talk to Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. Where's that gone? Has anybody said in in ages, Donald Trump shouldn't talk to Mueller? When have you, have you heard anything about it? I asked earlier in the broadcast, where is Adam Schiff? Where's all the Russian collusion? Now they're in the marketing of the lie. See, they've told the lie. They've tried to sell the lie. Now they must remarket the lie because nobody's believing it. Comey's on the ropes. I saw an article that said Eric Holder, you know, making an evaluation of if he wants to run for president in 2020. Let me tell you something right now, folks. Eric Holder is in no way evaluating whether he's going to run for president in 2020. It isn't happening. That is a media fabrication. It's a lie. You're going to say, Kevin, how do you know you ain't talking to Eric Holder? Let me tell you, Eric Holder is trying to keep himself out of prison. Eric Holder is trying to redistrict and do things in such a way that Congress will never uh, convict him of anything. He is so busy working with the what do they call it, the the undercurrent, you know, the swamp creatures of D.C. They got, in a, you know, the deep state. Thank you. The deep state They're so busy working with the deep state. There is no way that clown is considering running for president. He is probably one of the most unpopular people on the planet. I'm talking about even with Democrats. They can't stand him. Have you ever looked at Holder? He always looks like he's angry because he is. <laughs> Have you seen many of these people that you look at? Look at uh, Peter Strzok. Uh, look at uh, McCabe. Look at any picture you see of McCabe. Now, don't misunderstand me. He's a serious G-man, a crooked one. But they're all mad. They're mad for a reason. Hillary Clinton fakes like she you can see she's straining. The, <laughs> but do you I can see the frown under. Don't look. Don't look at me. You know, you see it. You see the devil in her eyes when you see her because she's disingenuous. A town hall with Comey. What next? A, a party of former. They're going to reconvene the cast of Obama's administration like it's a reunion of friends. Or the reunion of Seinfeld. Oh, hey, everybody, welcome back. Talk about having crooks, so many crooks in one location. Jeez, hey, if you do that, will you please let the new version of the FBI just arrest all those crooks? Wow. You're going to give Comey that much latitude in on nationwide TV so he can. Oh, we want to talk about a wine fest. Holy cow. Please bring some crackers because it's going to be a wine fest. Oh, what, what do you eat with wine? What do you have with wine? Champagne, you have strawberries. With wine, what? Cheese? Bring some cheese. That's it. <laughs> Producers like to correct you all the time. They do it in front of people too. That's what I, I know. They don't hear. I don't. They don't hear you. But you're still correcting me while I'm on the air. 
Anyway, Comey's going to get an audience. Wow. Hey, I want to review a few tweets. There was some good stuff out there. Roseanne show is back. We talked about that. Great ratings, blah, blah, blah. Hey, here's one. Here was something I got. It was a tweet. Obama was president during eight school shootings. Why did they wait until now to protest? He was president during eight of them. Now, he was president during a lot more school shootings, probably if you include colleges and universities. And certainly he was president during lots of Muslim bombings, lots of Muslim uh, you know, atrocities here in America. No protest. Muslims, you know, this Muslim guy goes in, he shoots up a, a nightclub. No protest. Gay people went after gays. If Muslim shoots up a, a, a Christmas party. Christians didn't even protest. But certainly leftists didn't protest that Muslim, those Muslims having all those weapons. They wait till now. I wonder why. Huh? Interesting. Interesting timing, leftist. Here's one. A new bill in Kansas would make schools liable for shootings if they deny teachers the right to carry a gun on campus. Perfect. In fact, I think all gun-free zones should be held accountable. If you remove my right to defend myself, then you have the obligation to protect me. That's what a guy wrote on Twitter. He's 100% right. See, when we become more litigious, I know, look, 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 conservatives, you hate to sue. You do. You hate to get all you know, riled up and all. But if you were to sue a municipality for somebody, you know, uh, on, and it has to be the victim. I learned this through talking to attorneys because we used to want to wage some lawsuits. If you want to get the attention of leftists, hit them in their pocketbook. When they're playing with other people's money, you can't do anything to them. When it's their money, suddenly it's a big deal. See, let me give you an example. Jerry Brown is the governor of California. So maybe you, you, you have some issues with him there. But Jerry Brown, the citizen, can be sued. He can be sued. So, I mean, I'm presuming this is the case. Uh, other legislators who want to make, for example, sanctuary cities, if something happens to a victim, we need, uh, well, I'm telling you right now, if the conservatives, if we got together, and I know they're, the group's kind of like this, but if we had a group of, of attorneys that we funded and all they did was going to initiate lawsuits against the lunacy of leftism, we'd nip this thing in the bud. We would. This bill to sue schools, sue gun-free zones, sue municipalities that limit your ability. See, here's what they do. They say, yeah, you can carry your gun. You can, you can have a constitutional right to the Second Amendment. Oh, but you can't bring your gun into this location. Oh, but you can't bring your firearm into such and such into a, you know, the, the Walmart or whatever. We're a gun free zone. OK, the minute somebody loses a lawsuit in a gun free zone, you're going to see people scraping those little signs off the window. Yeah. Uh huh. We're no longer a gun free zone. It's ridiculous. Here was another one. I, ha- I have not researched this story, but I saw this. I thought it was interesting. Minneapolis FBI agent Terry James Alberry has been charged with leaking classified information to the intercept. Go research that for yourselves. I thought that was interesting given the, the tenor of the FBI these days. <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, but he's leaking uh, information to the intercept, which is, uh, you know, some sort of media outlet. I don't know whether that media outlet is lefty, righty, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? He's leaking information. Comey's FBI, well, you know, remnants now under Director Ray. So what are they going to do there? Here's one I found kind of interesting. Emma Gonzalez, pro-gun student from Parkland, now admits she bullied Nicholas Cruz. Perhaps the blood she sees on the hands of the NRA was actually on her own hands, as well as the FBI, local police, teachers and other classmates. This is what somebody tweeted. I agree wholeheartedly. If you were to dig into the story of Nicholas Cruz, you're going to find out that all the liberal policies of tolerance and non-bullying and acceptance, etc., is out the window. And if you've seen Emma Gonzalez, she looks, she shaved her head. She looks like a Nazi. She does. She looks like a Nazi. Looks like she'd be one of Hitler's kids, except her name is Gonzalez. So he wouldn't have accepted her. Uh, and, and neither do the Democrats, by the way. But they, they, what I mean by that is, they accept her publicly, but they don't accept her privately. 
That's how Democrats work. See, when we have an icon as conservatives, we accept them publicly and privately. I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I'm for so-and-so. And then when you get to me at a cocktail party or something, I'm like, nah, I, mean, I was just saying that on TV. We accept the people that we accept. They don't. They love Al Sharpton publicly, but privately they can't stand him. They love Jesse Jackson publicly, but privately they can't stand him. They love Joy Behar and the women of The View publicly, but privately they want nothing to do with them. They talk worse about them than you and I ever would. I'm telling you, that's the way they work. Owned by the hard left, they're organized, well-organized, well-funded, and I'm going to tell you, keep your eye on them. Don't take them for granted. Yeah, we've got them by the, you know, by the short hairs. But don't take these people for granted. They are crooked to their core, the most mean-spirited people on the planet. Remember that. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.